Hello. Today I'd like to talk to you about, or well now I'd like to talk to you about the, the opening in chess and what you're supposed to do right at the start of the game. Yeah, I've told you what not to do, which is not to get checkmated in four moves, but what are you supposed to do? Three things, maybe three and a half. Three things you're supposed to do in the opening. Uh, get your pieces out as fast as you can. Try and get control of the centre and make your king safe as you can by castling. Let's have a look at those ideas uh, in turn. First of all, um, get your pieces out as fast as you can. At the moment they're all asleep in bed and uh, they're no use to you there at all. Um, if you don't do anything about getting your pieces out, your opponent's going to wander up and checkmate you. It's a bit like uh, if you can imagine in a game of football or some other team sport that uh, all the, the players are in the changing rooms at the start of the game and you only get one piece to move onto the uh, pitch at once and I don't care if you've got the best footballer in the world if, if they're the only player on the pitch and your opponent's got the, the, the opposing team's got all of their players on the pitch um, you're going to lose so get your players out onto the pitch as fast as you can and uh, don't waste any time doing that that's job number one uh, job number two is try and control the middle of the board. What's so special about the middle of the board? Well, again, like in lots of team sports, control of the middle of the, the, the pitch and the, or the, the, the um, court is uh, is important. It's because from the middle of the, the court, the middle of the board, these sorts of squares, that's the easiest to get anywhere else. Um, that's worth spending a little bit of time with, actually. So if, our, if we can imagine our knight um, was on... Uh, the square A1 and not the square next to it. A knight on A1 a knight on A1 uh, can only reach two squares. A knight on B1 where it starts can reach three squares. So that's kind of better. We always think the Queen's the most powerful piece but that's because it can reach the most squares. If a knight's on C1 as it's gradually moving towards the centre, a knight on c1 can reach four squares. If you move a knight up a little bit to somewhere like b2, a knight on b2, still only four squares, a knight that moves to c2 can reach six squares and a knight that moves off its first uh, its initial uh, position towards the middle of the board can reach the maximum number of squares it can reach oops, it can reach eight squares so compared to the knight in a corner it's worth four times as much because it can it can reach a knight in a corner can reach two squares. This can reach eight squares, so it's a much more powerful knight. And knights in particular benefit from being in the middle of the board. Well, actually, every piece benefits from being in the middle of the board. A, a bishop on the edge of the board can reach only seven squares. A bishop in the middle of the board can reach fourteen. And even the mighty queen benefits from being in the middle of the board. So, get your pieces out towards the middle of the board. Uh, try and control the centre as much as you can and castle your king into safety and if uh, I, get, I always like to tell youngsters to start with e4 as an opening move if we're trying to castle and uh, we're trying to castle on the king side perhaps these two pieces have got to move first so uh, e4 enables you to get your bishop out and get your knight out and then you can castle all right, so e4 is a good first move. Now, if your opponent doesn't do anything at all, you can follow up with d4, knight f3. So we're controlling the centre as much as we can, and we've moved two pawns to get both of our bishops out. Uh, knight f3, uh, bishop c4, so we can castle, knight c3. Rookie one, bishop f4, queen d2, 
and uh, uh, we move our rooks to the center to the, uh, the the rooks will only really have a good time if they can get out and about they'll get out and about if there's some pawn swaps and at the moment the only pawns that are going to be swapped are these two in the middle so the rooks are behind the pawns that might be swapped waiting to take control of these open files and that's the reason you got to castle your king because if your enemy's rooks are coming to the middle files and uh, where your king is sitting that's going to be very dangerous for you so castle your king preferably on the king's side fairly early in the game not the not necessarily the first thing you must do but uh, one of the three things you're supposed to do in the opening so get your pieces out towards the center get control of the center if you can and uh, and get castled i said there might be three and a half things to do um, do make sure you get your rooks on a file that might be opened uh, lots 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 of people say you know that, that that the idea of the opening is get your pieces out castle get control of the center and they forget to say well don't forget about your poor old rooks because it's one of the most important things that beginners often fail to do uh, is get their rooks into the game as early as they can they just get their knights and their bishops and the queen and forget about your rooks but your two rooks together are worth more than a queen so if you're not playing with your rooks you're more or less a queen behind so don't do that so that's the ideal position if uh, or something like an ideal position if your opponent doesn't do anything but let's let's assume that your opponent's going to move as well so e4 e5 and now well maybe we can play d4 but well let's prepare it a little bit knight f3 is a move we know we want to make and it attacks a pawn, so that may uh, make black play knight c6. Now we might be able to castle a lot faster than black. Bishop c4 enables us to castle. Uh, bishop c5. Now you can castle here, but I'm going to recommend that you play c3 and try and take over the centre. Now, uh, maybe that's a square that you want your knight, but uh, let's have a little look at what, what, what might happen. Uh, knight to f6, and now d4 takes and takes and now that square's free for the knight and uh, white's dominating the centre this looks pretty good and black's got a problem it's a problem that black can solve but black's got a problem um, rather than playing uh, c takes d4 you can play e5 and poke the knight uh, you can castle and if white, black wants to give you some extra time to develop some more pieces that's nice uh, so that's a little, uh, what we call a gambit in chess and uh, lastly um, you can poke at the bishop before taking back on d4 so lots of little ideas you can play rather than the same thing every game uh, one more idea I'll show you about this o the, this opening moves is uh, having said that we might want to play c3 and d4 to take over the centre here's, here's another gambit this is the gambit of Captain Evans he plays b4 free pawn well it's not quite free because white gets to play c3 with a gain of time because the bishop has to be the bishop's chased away and now white can play this move that we wanted to play earlier d4 so white's got on with their plan and has paid a pawn for it now if you think that's good that's a good good value uh, then i recommend to you evans gambit um, but you don't have to sacrifice a pawn to play the plan and that's how to play the opening in chess